Hey, everybody, what's up? You're watching The Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixman. Look who's here. It's Mike Richter, former New York Ranger, goaltender, Stanley Cup winner. Mike, what's up, man? How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to talk to you. So one of the things about the pandemic is that we watched old games, right? People got to watch the 94 Cup run again. People were all about the memorabilia. I know you got some stuff going on with Athlete Direct. So what was it like to go into your personal vault here and uh, find some old, old memorabilia that you had? Uh, it's, it's really cool. I mean, you know, I've worked with Brandon a lot in the past, and this is a little different. Uh, you get to do, you're directly to the fans, as, they, as the name suggests, and it's not just memorabilia. I've got maple syrup that I produce, and it's a way of kind of expressing who you are directly to the fans. They get to go right to you and pick up anything from old cleats to a catching glove to, you know, a food product that, you, in this case, we happen to be making. So, yeah, I've got Patrick syrup. It's great, um, but... This is a platform unlike anything that I've ever seen before. And Brendan's always seems to be kind of at the cutting edge of what's new and, and, and interesting. So let's see how it goes, man. But it's really cool. How long have you been making maple syrup? That's a little bit different, right? <laughs> well, uh, interestingly, uh, Mark Messier was a good friend and teammate. He's on the same platform. Um, and he had grown up out West. And, you know, when he came East, he said, that's one of the things he loves. I mean, he's Canadian and there was always a big kind of wrestling match whenever we go to Quebec. This American syrup isn't real syrup. We got to do the Quebec syrup. And uh, Kevin Lowe, uh, a good friend of ours as well on, on the 94 championship team, would always kind of school everybody on like, this is maple syrup, guys. This is the way it's supposed to taste. And as I, you know, as I was uh, growing up, I grew up in Philadelphia, so I'd never really tasted uh, actual maple syrup is always kind of the answer by and whatnot. And um, I, I went to school in Lake Placid, New York, and there's a huge push for New York State. The capacity to produce a locally grown product is really big. And so there's a lot of incentives and I started doing it as a hobby. And then I started getting um, kind of serious about it. And Cornell University has an agricultural extension up there. And so I'm learning from a guy named Mike Farrell who's a PhD in forestry. And um, He's, I mean, this is as good as it gets. This is an amazing thing. I mean, it's kind of magic. You, you literally put a tap in the tree. It only happens in the spring and it's temperature dependent. You boil it down and you have maple syrup. So who doesn't like that on a pancake? And it's kind of cool. And I give the profits to charity. So there's a lot of cool components to it. It's, it's you know, part hobby, part real interest in science and, and just fun, but it's good for the local economy and obviously good for the charities. You know, it's funny because that hits on the fact that you and your teammates have stayed in touch all these years, right? You know, some teams kind of fade, they do their own things. You guys have kept it tight. Why do you think that is ultimately? Um, I think maybe maybe it's it's hard to, you know, know what, what the, where the cart and the horse are, but I think we were a really tight group and that's why we had success. But then like any team that tastes success, you will you end up being a family really tight and you experience these ups and downs of a, of, of a year and the competition. And, you know, that's what sports is. It's putting yourself on the line, not just physically, but emotionally. And you have 25 guys, actually the whole organization uh, becomes very, very tight. I mean, I'm still in touch with everybody from, you know, the, the, the trainers to the security guards at MSG, they went through all this stuff with us, but your teammates, you know, this is what you grew up, envisioning your entire life and this is what your goal is as an athlete and so going through that with somebody really makes you tight but I don't think you can have that level of success without having a really important kind of understanding in the locker room of having that tightness having that friendship having that family kind of support network because you're going to rely on each other you're going to be stressed you're going to be challenged over the course of of the year and uh, unless you have a tight bond you're not going to come through the other side and we really that 94 team that won the championship is as good of a group of guys I've ever seen in the locker room. It was one of the most special seasons too, just in New York sports history, obviously in the NHL the past 20, 25 years. What don't we talk about enough, Mike, with that Rangers team? What else should we really be focusing on when you think about that run? That's a great question. Um, I think when you look back, it's always, easy, oh, you guys won the championship. You, you know, you had a, a tough coach and you had great players and you knew this was going to happen. My gosh, look at the back line. You had Bukaboom, Zuboff, Leach. Yeah, we had all those guys, but going in, you don't know that you're going to actually take that final step, right? We still had to get through all these great teams to do it. Everybody does. Every year there's a championship. You kind of create your own story, but you're going to be challenged. You're going to need every inch of, of, of the talent in that locker room and every bit of character that you have. And, you know, that year, 
gosh, going through the Jersey series, everybody knew it was a war, but Leachy was hurt. You know, other guys had to step up. Uh, Keenan was, you know, shortening the bench. So some guys were thrown into uh, these roles that you otherwise wouldn't have. Uh, seventh game, Joe Kosher couldn't play. Nick Kiprios had to come in and play. Like, it's what you work for all year. These guys that you didn't think you relied on, you need to rely on as the year goes on. And that's just the way sports are. That's what a team's about. And Mark always said that, you know, every single person in this organization, you know, owns a piece of that pride because they did something to help move this idea forward. And so I think it's just the challenge, the adversity that you always face. There's always a backstory. It always looks great. You won the championship, what could go wrong? Lots and lots go wrong, but you have to overcome it. You mentioned Mark Messier before, and he's been a good friend. He was your teammate. Yeah. What is most profound about him when you think about his impact on the sport and also just his impact on the city of New York? I think it's his attitude, his character. I mean, this guy, people say is a born leader, and I think that's true. You, you know, we're friends with his family. His father was a, a great influence on him and, and a really great mentor to a lot of the guys. His mom, uh, brothers and sisters, they're all part of it. But Mark worked on it too, all right? So he was a big, strong guy from Western Canada, knew the game. Um, it was in his blood, but he also was a student of the game and a student of leadership, and he still is to this day. I mean, he read an awful lot of books on it, you know, would ask people, you know, if he's the type of guy that ran in circles that was different than the average guy. But I mean, he wanted to constantly improve himself. And so whether it was a business leader or, you know, another great player like Mike Jordan, how do you approach this? What, what success in your eyes? And I think Mark, that level of perfectionism and professionalism, um, he didn't give a speech to say, you must do this to win. He lived it and he was a walking example. And, you know, it's funny, you always think of mentors as somebody who's 40 years older and who's gone through things before you have. Well, Mark was a peer, but he was a mentor for a lot of guys. I mean, he had won, you know, what, four or five Stanley Cups coming into New York. He had been a veteran, but he still had a lot to give and, and he was still improving. Um, a lot of people say, oh, you know, he's, he's lived a hard life. He's, you know, kind of wrung out his career. How much is he really going to do in his next chapter? Well, you know, bring an entire organization to the point of understanding how to be, um, you know, a, a real winning uh, through and through. So, um, I think it's his approach, you know, all the physical gifts and, and the skill level were so crucial. I mean, he scored big, important goals for us. He did give great speeches, but I think he just, that level of professionalism, you know, you think about the Adam Graves and the Leachy, myself, um, Zuboff, uh, you know, Kovalev, we learned a lot from him and that helped us become better athletes. Yeah, one of the all-time great leaders for sure. And, you know, I think the amazing thing about your career is that so much went into that moment going into the Stanley Cup, right? You grow up playing youth hockey, you're doing your thing in Philly, you go to Lake Placid, you're all over the league, and then you finally win. You do it also in New York, and you're a PA guy. So what was that experience like for you? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's amazing. Um, you know, you grow up in Philadelphia. They, that was a compelling team. The Broad Street Bullies were winning when I was a kid uh, in the 70s and Bernie Perrant, Hall of Fame goaltender. I idolized him, Bobby Clark, you know, real, just amazing personality in that team. And if you're not from Philadelphia, love to hate them. If you're from Philly, you have to love them. Um, but the minute you get drafted by, you know, that next team and of all places, New York, you know, there's a great rivalry there and you become a New York fan. And to this day, I obviously have a soft spot for all things Philly, but I'm a New Yorker. I, I, my, my adult life has been spent in New York and, um, it's, it's, it's just, you know, both of those things are part of who I am. And uh, I, I, I kind of, um, I'm fortunate, I really feel to have both of those experiences. Philly's a great gritty town and I learned a ton from, you know, having to watch some really in, impressive people uh, go through the different sports from, you know, baseball and, 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 and football to obviously hockey, which I love the most. But um you know, there's no place that's bad to win a championship, but if you're going to walk into a, a place and win, New York's the place to do it. And 54 years um, kind of a build up before that, you know, Kevin Lowe always had said, you know, he came here after winning in, in, in Edmonton and people were like, you know, what about that curse 54 years? He's like, I don't know, I have nothing to do with it, but I've got to say there's a tremendous upside to winning it after all that kind of frustration. And 
you could feel it. It wasn't just celebration. It was relief. It was, you know, disbelief. Uh, it was all those things at once. And for the players too, because it, you start to carry that with you. You're representing this city and it, it matters to you on a level that's deeper than I could have imagined. We hear the old adage, there's nothing like winning in New York. Do you have a memory from the celebration or just somewhere that you were that kind of blew your mind? Like I've won a Stanley Cup I'm on the top of the mountain and I'm doing it here in New York. Do you have any memories you can still think about? Yeah. I mean, at the beginning of that year, the story has been told a bit, but it's a cool one. Um, Coley Campbell, the assistant coach and, and Mike Keenan and, and the film team put together kind of splices of, of New York Rangers and the Mets winning and the ticker tape parade. So it kind of gave you the feel of what it would be like to actually win here in New York, right at training camp. Okay. So sort of set the tone and Mark and Mike Keenan in particular were like, this is not something that you should be shy about saying that's the cup. We want it. That's our mission. Don't say, yeah, it'd be nice to win. No, this is our goal every year. This is our goal. And so own it like this, you know, you may or may not get there, but say it, tell everybody what you're about. And um, I thought that kind of bluntness and that, uh, I don't know, responsibility, like we're here to win the championship. We have to beat every team to do it but we think we're capable and this is what we're going to do. But from that kind of set the tone of the year, but then you go through the year and the ups and downs and all that kind of stuff, the injuries, the winning streaks, the losing streaks, the trades. And we just had a lot of drama that year and a lot of, you know, really kind of interesting uh, characters on that team, a ton of fun. Um, but, you know, after going through the year, you know, our practice sessions were so hard. The games made, you know, a little bit easier by how hard it was, you know, in, in, in our practices. But again, you don't get there for nothing. But I think you're in this purposefully, you're in a bubble. Like you, you know, you don't really read the paper. You're just getting up. You, you, you go to your practice. You take a nap. You play a game. You hit repeat. You win. Great. Do it again. You lose. Scrape it off. You do it again. And so you really, you keep your emotions in check. And then you win that last game. The buzzer goes off. It was a one goal game. And you're like, you want it and you know the enormity of what you've done because you've been thinking moment to moment shift to shift shot to shot now the year's over and two days later we're in the ticker tape parade and you kind of you have to put it out of your mind you can't win the Stanley Cup in the first game of the playoffs you have to win the right. first game of the playoffs you have to win the first shift and then the second shift and so all that is to say that you kind of you're not thinking long term and suddenly you get a chance to sit back and go wow, we accomplished exactly what we set up to do in the beginning of the year. And here it is. Like, I didn't realize how big that parade and how much it meant to the city. We came around the corner of the Kenyan heroes, you know, we were out having fun for a few nights and, you know, we're all full of ourselves and all that. But that's when it hit me like, this is what it means to the city because the place seemed to stop. We came out of MSG and the, um, all the postal workers that are across the street in, in the gigantic uh, building, or the name excuse me, they were lined up like it was almost like a military procession and clapping as, as the buses carrying the players and family and organization came out. Like even the bus, we're all laughing and talking about the night before and all kinds of fun, just got quiet. Like there was a reverence to it, you know? And so when we ended up hitting the Kenya heroes, that's when it dawned on me. Like my brother was up late and I called him. I said, you gotta get yourself down here. Like this is, this is different. This is special. And, you know, overwhelming, humbling, just the, the, the ticker tape and all that and the size of the crowd and the roars you came. It was crazy that a city would embrace it that much. So, yeah, I mean, it's a long way of saying you, 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 you think back to the beginning of training camp and it was exactly what you hoped you'd achieve only it was bigger than, and better than I had ever imagined. Ranger fans are a pretty passionate group of people. And listen, there's been some drama recently. Yeah. New head coach will be coming in. New executives will be coming in. How do the Rangers get back to the top of the mountain? What do they need to do? Well, they're doing it. I mean, number one, you, you, you don't win without talent. And they do have talent. This is, this is an incredibly exciting team. Look, I'm a bad person to ask. I'm biased. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> you know, I bleed Ranger blue. It's the only place I ever played. But um, you want to like those guys. I like them when they're not good. They're a great team. They're a great young team. And the single component that they don't have is experience as a group. And Edmonton Oilers had to do this. Montreal Canadiens had to do this. Patrick Wilde had to do this. Every great player had to do this. They had to go through it. Wayne Gretzky didn't walk on the ice at 18 and win his first Stanley Cup. Damn near did. He's that good. But 
he still had to apprentice himself and figure out as an organization how to do this. Mark Messier, the same thing. You know, at 17, 18, when they started their pro career, they were magnificent players, but they didn't have that component of the resiliency. And they, they admitted that. They said they were playing against um, the Islanders who had this great veteran team. And they said, wow, you know, the, the sacrifice of the stick to itness and just that experience that these guys had. Um, they had to develop that in Edmonton in order to win you know, the first of their many Stanley Cups. And we had to develop that here in New York. Um, and that has to happen again. Um, and that's just every team, you know, Tampa Bay, you really think about it, they were a great team for a long time. I was just reading an article um, on, you know, Eric Lindros and, and, and the Quebec whole thing. That Quebec Nordique team was amazing. A bunch of first round picks. Then they went to Colorado, young, great, talented. They needed that veteran leadership and they needed the experience. So I, I think this team's all in the right direction. Um, you know, I'm sorry to see the, the coaching staff go. I'm sorry to see the, the, the turmoil. You know, it's a really difficult business. Um, there's nobody that saved players, coaches, GMs. Um, love JD. I love Gortz. These guys are all great people. So, you know, the disruption is real. It's hard on the fans. It's hard on the players. It's hard on the organization. Um, but the single thing that they really do have is talent. And they will... Um, you ask around the league, people recognize this is a really exciting team. And, the, you know, a lot of like just the measurements. I know they didn't make the playoffs this year, but their power play, their penalty kill, their goaltending, like they have hit the mark on so many levels. So I think the foundation is really there for them to do great things. So I don't think it's a huge stretch. It, it, if, if as much as I'm biased, if they didn't have the talent, I'd say it's a problem. Um, but they have the talent and they're going to take that step. Well, Mike, really appreciate the time. You were always a pleasure to watch and goal. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you down the road, all right? That was great. Thanks for having me on.